the world's largest cave system, 400 miles. Kahokia, a place of intrigue, these mound builders are a sort of magicians because they vanished. Let us so live that when we come to die, even Undertaker will be sorry. Be with me. Ride with me. Let's explore the spirit of America. And Highway 61, celebrating Bob Dylan. Most celebrated outlaw. I got on my bike and I rode straight through and I arrived and, and I found him. Hi, 12 feet, 12 feet. What do you think, I lost 10,000 miles? <laughs> Take care of yourself, Sadhguru. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. Oh. Already 9.35. We must leave in the next 10 minutes. Possible? We're not? Yeah. Ready. Ah, uh, 9.45 in the morning. Just starting off from Triple uh, I or Isha Institute of Inner Sciences. So we're taking a scenic route through uh, uh, Bloomingdale and getting to Mammoth Caves from there on to St. Louis today in Missouri. So about Nearly seven to eight hours of ride, teams are all getting ready, still many of them packing, but we're leaving them behind and going on because we have to be at the caves in time for us to spend enough time there. Uh, hope to bring in the human experience of a nation, its terrain, its history. No history, no nation, no people ever existed without their own unique spiritual processes, longings to access mysticism, which might have turned into a religious process over a period of time, but these longings have always been there in human heart. So this is an exploration of the American heart. What was beating in their hearts? What drove them to do what they did in their lives? Much of it, factually, we can never find. But in spirit, we can touch these dimensions. This is the effort right now. Thank you very much. Let's get going. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so you left? Tell me. Yes, baby, on the road for an hour. So what? Even in a pandemic, I can't be in the same place as you. You'll run away on the motorcycle. And the pandemic, uh, you have to keep distance from everybody. <laughs> so the only way you can do it is be on a motorcycle and be the fastest vehicle on the road, <laughs> you have distance from everybody. Where, where are you going today? Today, uh, we are riding towards the Mammoth Cave. It's one of the 
largest cave systems in the world. We went there once and, many years uh, ago, no? Yeah, many years ago, both of us went, you remember? Yeah. Then what monster are you riding for this 10,000 miles? Uh, I'm riding the K1600 TT. Uh, it's not a monster, it's a very civilized uh, wonder. <laughs> this motorcycle is uh, 344 kilometers with uh, kilo kilograms. With me, with accessories, 425. But wow. 425 kilograms it just shakes around <laughs> in the wind. I said it's unbelievable that 425 kilograms get buffeted around in the wind like that. But I'm pretty sure you're yeah. doing speeds that are unbelievable too. Uh, don't talk about speed. Don't talk about speed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm riding fast enough to keep away from everybody. That's it. <laughs> okay. Part of the virus protocol. <laughs> okay, baby. Take care. Hmm? Okay. I'll speak to you yeah. soon. Yep. Okay. Now, yes. Karam. Go ahead, this next group. I don't know who all is together, so. Oh, all of you are. Okay, you go as a group. Well, caves have always held intrigue. One reason is just the darkness. This cave is uh, between three states of southern Indiana, Kentucky and Tennessee states. I mean to say it's that large, 400 miles. Mammoth cave system is the world's largest cave system. The erosional force of the Green River has helped to carve the limestone into unique and extraordinary karst topography of this region over millions of years. Well, archaeology is not my expertise, nor is it something that you're looking for. So, why are we in this cave? The movement of water in the calcium rocks is very similar to the movement of how the basic movement of fluids happen in our own body, because the fundamental engineering of this creation is same. The capillary system, how it moves, that one little bit moves and creates a vacuum and pulls the next little bit and it keeps going and going and going and this is a... this is an eternal pump, which is constantly working everywhere. Because of this, these cave systems have formed over a period of time and uh, over 600 feet of limestone rock still exists beneath these caves. A cave means a natural shelter, both for animals and human beings. So inevitably, wherever there are ancient traditions and cultures, there have been caves, and as you know, the only preserved representations of ancient cultures is in the form of cave arts. <laughs> Satguru! Oh, 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 oh. We're blessed to uh, meet you. Where are you all from? Michigan. Okay. <laughs> so here's an effort, crawling back into a very long cave, 400 mile long cave. To feel, to touch the people of the past. We may not be all factually correct, but the important thing to feel the spirit, because this land was inhabited 
by millions of people who by today's logic may not be correct but they are people of immense spirit be with me ride with me let's explore the spirit of america We'll go. We'll go? Okay. Yeah, we'll take a break somewhere. Okay, yeah? driving another four and a half hours. Yes. Huh? Yeah, okay. Take off your glasses when you're driving. The light gets little dim. It's just that one. No, no, that's okay. Uh, right now, what is it? It's still 4.30 something. Yeah. But uh, by six o'clock, please take it off, huh? We are at Kahokia, a mound city east of Mississippi River. When we say mounds, mounds were built for various purposes, for social gatherings, for spiritual and religious rituals, for sacrifices, as graves, as residential quarters for the elite in the society. When you look at the structures, they show that there has been a certain understanding of measurements, angles and alignment. What you see here behind me, today being called as the Monk's Mound. But this is the largest mound. When I say largest, the base of the mound is covering over sixteen acres of land. This is a city with over 120 mounds, but today 80 are still intact. Kahokia, a place of intrigue, 
because to build these mounds, these people carried fifty-five million cubic feet of earth. Why would someone make such a stupendous effort? What drives them? This human longing to be something more than who you are. Whether you go stand on a mound or you wear high heels, essentially you're trying to be something more. Or you reach for your ultimate realization, essentially you are wanting to be something more than what you are. Something more than what nature allows you to be right now something more beyond your physical and psychological self. This longing has driven this culture because we do not even know what nation they were. We just call them mound builders <laughs> These mound builders are a sort of Magicians because they vanished without a trace. Somewhere around 1300 A.D. or C.E. as it is known today, they just vanished. We will explore these dimensions as we go on. Namaskaram, namaskaram to all of you, wherever you are. We are here at uh, Kahokia Mound City in Masauri. My name is Lamont Stewart. I happened to uh, get up this morning, I'm laying in bed, and uh, I take a look at my phone, and up up to the, uh, uh, the app that tells me that, uh, that uh, Sadhguru was streaming live from Cahokia Mounds. And I was watching a live feed and I jumped in the truck and it runs fast, it does. See, it, it's a fast running truck. So it got me down here just like that. Thank you for showing me a old lady. Thank you for being who you are. <laughs> Thank you. Nice meeting you. Thank you. My name is Sandra, and yesterday I was in Alabama, and I just got a gut feeling that um, if Sadhguru is going through Missouri into Illinois, he's going to come here. And I got on my bike and I rode straight through, and I arrived here 12:30 um, midnight. And um, and this morning I came here, and and I found him. How are you, huh? I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I've come on a long journey. You're, you're hard to chase down. <laughs> Loss breed outlaws. Many outlaws turned into American legends are often about individuals standing apart and out of reach from the all-powerful system. <laughs> Probably among the outlaws, one of the most celebrated outlaw is Jesse James. Ah, oh, they just opened the pick, huh? Hello? He was an American outlaw, a bank and train robber, gorilla, and the leader of James Younger Gang, raised in Little Dixie area of Western Missouri. Though their crimes were reckless and brutal, many members of the gang commanded notoriety, fame, and fan following in the public eye. After being pursued by law enforcement for nearly twenty years, ironically, 
Jesse James was shot and killed for a bounty of 10,000 US dollars. <laughs> nice and steppy. In the making of modern America, Mississippi has played a significant role in people's understanding of terrain. East of Mississippi was east, west of Mississippi was west. So crossing Mississippi and getting across was like a within North America, a new world. Rivers in the world have such a significant role in, in human life. It's only now, after the invention of the modern electric pump, that people can live away from a river, otherwise you had to live somewhere close to a river. Even if you have an electric pump, it's still worth living on a river bank. Hello everybody, before we leave, just take ten minutes, just to make sure not a scrap of paper or plastic is anywhere here, okay? Wherever we go, before we leave, the place should be better than when we got in there, okay? Let's make it up. Here we are uh, going towards Hannibal, Mark Twain's uh, place, while well, uh, entire Hannibal is described as a fond uh, love letter to Mark Twain. And this is a place where he worked upon Huckleberry Finn. <laughs> and here we are, Hannibal, to visit Mark Twain. Well, here we are uh, in the study of Mark Twain, so one of his quotes, uh, let us so live that when we come to die, even Undertaker will be sorry. <laughs> That's a way to live. Yeah, Tom Sawyer and uh, Huckleberry Finn immortalized in the form of a sculpture and whatever he wrote in very common language. In his own words, fine literature is like wine, but what I write is like water, but everybody needs water. <laughs> this is Huck Finn or Huckleberry Finn, one of my favorite characters of literature when I was growing up. Uh, Moby Dick and Huck Finn kind of lived in my head for some time. Nobody else really occupied my mind much. <laughs> and I caught rabbits too. Oh, Holly Dick song. I'm quite happy. Here we are on Highway 61, celebrating Bob Dylan. Can you beat these two American legends in one day? One is a living legend, another was Mark Twain, we just came from there. It's fantastic to be here, Highway 61, the now very famous Highway 61. Here we are, in a survey.
6.30 in the morning. Facing the river, don't sit together with social distancing. Do the Guru Puja, then do Shambhavi. And what we will do for the day, we'll decide later. It's best that uh, we leave this place at least by eight o'clock. <laughs> <laughs>